Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And yes, it's been a long time since I've done a show and I thought, well, I got a note the other day from one of our uh, listeners and says, Rob, what the heck you been? So I thought I better put on my glasses here if I could see what the heck I'm doing. So this is kind of late at night. And uh, so I'll just do, check my time here. Okay. So what has Rob been doing with the RV lately? Well, it's right in my yard, which is really good news because as some of you guys found out in the past, I was living in Arizona. Then a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, Sherry's father passed away up here in Central Oregon. Those who really, really know me know I'm originally from Central Oregon for many years and uh, used to live here. And uh, I thought my days of having large acreage and all that kind of stuff was uh, gone. But um, we had the opportunity between caregiving and we brought Sherry's mother down down to Arizona with us because we we had a house down there. We we're all settled in. And uh, we had the RV stored up here. And then uh, we just come up and use it as a vacation rental, I guess you'd call it. And uh, so uh, that was kind of life. Well, as time went on, it was, we had the house up here. We have to take care of the estate. It was really hard to do everything from Arizona. And we finally like um, talked to Sherry's mother and says, maybe we should buy your house and then we can help distribute some of the stuff, all that stuff. And we'll go back up there. And, and anyway, under all the circumstances um, and the timing was perfect, um, it was a go. And so we negotiated for a fair price on the house and uh, <clears throat> we sold ours and actually made a lot of money, which was a lot more than we expected. Um, so, uh, we came up here, which was good because there was a lot of equipment and things we needed to do. And of course, it kind of made the employment situation not work out so good. Um, so anyway, here we are. We are now on five acres in Central Oregon. Where our RVs at? And the RV hasn't moved. <laughs> and uh, not that we don't want it to move, except uh, there's still a lot of things in motion. And uh, just for, like this weekend, we actually have family coming down and trying to work out, trying to get some of the things out of here. So a lot of things you see behind me, like there, um, for those who are watching the uh, video version of this, um, there's a lot of stuff that we need to get out of here and we want family to get it. And uh, so we're kind of not disassembling the house too much. At the same time, you can see boxes behind me somewhere over here. <laughs> for those who are watching the video version and uh, there's boxes everywhere and that's our stuff. So we're kind of like halfway moved in and out of courtesy, which is wearing out, we have been um, sitting on this stuff and we're finally getting to a point where people are going to come and look at the stuff. And if not, then we'll put it into a state sale, which is good because the proceeds go to Sherry's mother. Uh, so, uh, uh, RVing is, our RV's now been more of a guest house. And for those of you that hasn't, haven't listened to RV Talk Radio, we've got hundreds and hundreds of shows. And uh, trust me, there's a lot of things going on that I always have an opinion about, which is good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, good old Bob Wells, um, he's having a heyday with all this COVID. It's like, Hey, you know, um, as you guys are all losing your houses and unemployment and, and being foreclosed on, hey, join me in vans and uh, and welcome to the world of pooping in buckets. And uh, that's not going so well either because down in Arizona, um, a bunch of BLM land are, um, are getting trashed and some are being closed. And uh, so it's like uh, Bob needs to spend a little more time to saying, OK, if you're going to come out here, it doesn't mean you have to be a hobo and a, you know, a hoarder of junk and uh, trash the places you're staying in. Yeah, it's free and you get this freedom and all that stuff. But uh, and your uh, overhead is low and I totally understand that, but uh, it's getting destroyed. And so uh, I don't know how to 
change that as you know it's probably a low percentage of people um, maybe not but then as the problem is is a lot of homeless one of the last resorts is living in an RV um, off-grid um, and that's totally understandable because it's really funny about this in economy and environment is uh, we're really in trouble I mean really um, and I guess RV sales are up um, <laughs> but anyway I don't know how anybody's buying anything with no jobs um, and maybe a lot of people you know that were just doing great before they got um, lost their jobs uh, have RVs and maybe they find walking away from their homes and stuff and trying to keep up the RV is a way to live and uh, it could be I'm not totally against that either um, I also noticed on the screen here I wonder if I can move my name there now you can say my name better say my name say my name so anyway so my channel uh, has been very busy talking about homesteading uh, what we're trying to do is um, <clears throat> yes I I have lots of thumbs up for folks that are in RVs but I've been kind of a um, more interested in the off-grid kind of thing so one of the things I've been talking about is buy a place that is away from the cities but is on the grid like why suffer that's why I like why do you want to live in a van so um, um, when you have a place like we got here um, the f things that I'm concerned about is how could I make my own food how could I store more meat how can I have water in the in endless water and uh, some I'm actually answering some of those questions and these are same questions that for our viewers is uh, when it gets tough there's so much more going on than just the RV world itself there's food shortages there's uh, employment issues there's political issues um, and the economy is getting set up to crash and burn if it doesn't that would be wonderful but it all indicators for those of you who've been around a while know that you can't have this much unemployment you can't have this much non-production going on you can't have companies working at half levels distribution companies can only do half the distribution that they did before that's where our problems are with food and in in cans and all kinds of things are being affected and I'm sorry you are viewers out there it's gonna affect you too and uh, <clears throat> You know fuel so far is stable um, for now but uh, do you have enough money in your pocket to do the fuel of course I see the obvious thing of if you could live in an RV and and, and live off-grid you could keep your overhead pretty low and just focus on food and water um, but I don't know how reliable that's going to be in the future for example here I have a well <clears throat> so the first thing I did was I bought a 5,000 uh, 5,000 watt generator and then I ordered um, an electrician to come in and put a converter um, in my well house that I could connect the generator directly to the well house which supplies me water for this house and all my watering systems whenever I need it uh, the good thing about that I don't have to run the generator the whole time this only when I need water because I do have a fifty dollar uh, fifty gallon reserve that when the pump house is on it puts and kind of pressure raises the the um, water system here um, so I could turn that on have that full or run uh, whatever I want to run um, uh, and then shut it off and then go through that 50 gallons and then start over <clears throat> and not burn up a lot of fuel so my answer to that is I don't have to store as much water here doesn't mean I don't but the other part is uh, um, as long as I have fuel I have water so my second thing here is food if food is 
And of course, the big thing I, I want to go back to with the economy the way it is, inflation is going to go nuts. And I don't know when it's I'm thinking everything's going to kind of explode after the elections. And Lord knows what it's going to be like after that. Whoever wins, we'll just put it that way. Um, <clears throat> what are we going to do? So, so you're in an RV and you're living out in the Thule's, but if a hundred dollars is only equal to like $25 in the future, uh, are you in good shape or not? And, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm worried about everything. I don't know um, what the best scenario is. H however, if RVers do it right and do go off grid, if they're smart enough to get out of debt, that's the key. Because um, <clears throat> debt's going to be a problem. So if, uh, if you're someone that's on the side of the fence, whether I should live in an RV or whatever, before you answer that question, I would say, get rid of those credit cards. Um, do what you have to do. If you have three cars, sell one. Um, if you have two cars, sell one. <laughs> <laughs> pay off debt. Uh, as much as it hurts, um, pay the debt off. Um, get the overhead down the zilch. And uh, you would probably survive this um, uh, nomad kind of lifestyle that you may be dreaming of, which the problem with it is when you're out in the Thule's, you have to have water and you have to have propane. Um, solar has got its limits. And uh, I know everybody's so crazy about solar, but it's not that magical. And if you really, really, really had a, a solar system that worked well, uh, you're going to be coughing up some money. And uh, same here. I'd love to have solar here on the five acres we have. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet because I want to power, you know, with food. I, ha I am a prepper and I've been telling all you guys in RVs, you ought to be a prepper too. And uh, the problem is you're so limited on what you can carry. And then if you do carry it, can you preserve it? Can you keep it, things cold and frozen when you need to? Um, learning how to can in an RV, uh, uh, in being in an RV, or learning to preserve food that can be uh, jarred and vacuum sealed, um, you could probably store a lot of food in your RV. But my last concern is, the riots and the desperation because eventually what's going to happen is <sighs> desperation means that folks are going to want what you have and they're going to go for the easiest targets first um, instead of attacking attacking homes and things like that they'll attack homeless people uh, instead of uh, uh, coming into someone's property and coming up against dogs and and uh, you know, lots of weaponry and stuff like that. Um, they're going to go after RVers. And what prime targets are there is sitting out in BLM land with only a few rigs around you and people just was sitting out in the you know, outskirts just watching your habits. And if you have something that disconnects and you go to town, you may come back to a very wiped out RV. Because people are going to go for the easy targets. And uh, an RVer would be, those RVs are so easy to break into. You can have all the security systems in the world. But if violence gets higher and we don't have the police department stuff to help you, uh, we're going to be a little bit more um, in, on our own. Let's put it that way. Is the RV the best way to go? And, and if you stay in RV parks and things like that, um, it's amazing what can happen in an RV park. And once again, when desperation means desperate people may do desperate things. And if people can observe your habits and observe when you're gone, um, is an RV the best way to go? 
I don't know. I'm not saying one way or another. Um, I think it is what it is. And uh, I also believe that you should try to live your life at the fullest and not always try. I mean, I do believe that you should be a visionary and try to be prepared for the future and counteract it where you can. But you're going to be we're all going to be thrown for a, a loop. I do know that I don't want to be near the cities because the cities are the ones going crazy right now. And it's starting to spread out a little more. And if a depression hits, and I'm saying the word depression, not recession, um, and millions and millions and millions of people out of work. Um, well, let's put it this way. Preppers that are told to bug out and get a bug out bag, I would be worried. <laughs> The last thing I want to be is out on a road or out somewhere where people can see what I have. And if you're walking around with a big old backpack on your back, all people can say is, I bet you that pack is full of food and some weapons and some things I could use. Let's take them out. Uh, I think the next stage would be someone living in their car or an RV. If it got that bad. Now, this is just kind of food for thought. So um, I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but I'm just saying, since I've talked to you, my last episode was kind of like, is this the end of RVing? I think it's actually the beginning for a lot of folks. And some of them are looking at it because they're just ignoring what's going on and living and having a fun life. And that's cool. There's, I end When do you, I mean, what's it, what's it going to take to get your attention? If you're not worried about the economy, if you're not worried about the cities, if you're not worried about inflation and food shortages, um, you may have an abrupt awakening. Um, if those things don't happen, then you get the last laugh, right? But lately, it seems like us preppers have been getting the last laugh lately. Um, as you guys know, uh, we store up at least six months worth of stuff. And uh, when the COVID hit, um, we were unaffected. We had, uh, of course, the big thing back then was toilet paper and paper towels and stuff like that. Um, and we actually had pasta and stuff like that. We are fine. Uh, we could have had more pasta and stuff, but... Uh, um, I mean, was, we, of course, there was other foods and stuff like that. Um, but now I've actually bought a, a quarter of a beef, bought another freezer. I have three freezers now. And uh, I have a generator to keep them cold if some reason we had go off grid. I don't think I could. I couldn't do that in an RV. I could do some of it. And I might even be able to get a small freezer in my RV, um, but power is always going to be a problem. And it's the same thing here. The first thing I thought about is I want water and I want my freezers to work. I can burn those um, oil lamps and, and be fine cooking. I've stored up big time on propane canisters, like a lot. And I can literally cook off of those for a long period of time. But I have five acres. I can build a fire and cook on fire here. Um, and uh, yes, and, and so my future things is I'm looking at a pellet stove system with a backup bat um, um, solar system to it to uh, if the power, I uh, lose a grid, I, my pellet stove would still work because they still have to have power. Um, I don't want a wood stove because I'm getting too old for uh, <laughs> cutting wood. And that's another thing that's coming up a lot is prepping and, and RVs and all that stuff is all based on your age. What are you up to doing? Are you up to keeping up a big old fifth wheel or a motor home or is it time to make it smaller? Um, and the same thing with prepping what's the common sense if things really got bad I think you need to hunker down now it's easy for me
because I got the room now and I got room to help my family. If they have to bail some out, they have a place to go. This is a fortress. I can tell you that for sure. Um, I felt like I wasn't helping my, I was not a backup for my family at all when I was an RVer full time. Uh, I felt like I was probably more of a burden to them and a worry. Now I'm a place they can go with their RVs and move here and be protected, um, fenced in and weaponry and uh, animals to help protect this property. And um, a community that has the same sense about us. So tends to be kind of conservative out around me. So it's not a good place to come if you're trying to do something bad. Um, I just put it that way. <laughs> Rednecks, I don't say everybody's a redneck here, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> and I'm definitely getting back to my redneck roots. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have chickens now. We get our own eggs. Uh, next year I might actually do meat chickens. So I actually, if I have the freezer space, um, you can grow, um, meat chickens in less than two to three months, uh, say a hundred chickens and butcher them all and have up to four or 500 pounds worth of meat in your freezer. Very affordable, very easy. And if next things keep going the way they are. Ah, <laughs> might have to do that. And I, I felt like when I was in RV, so many times I felt, especially if I go to Home Depot, and, and I think I've described this before, but there was nothing worse than going to Home Depot and walking through the stores and seeing flowers or plants or seeds and stuff. And no, I can't even walk around the garden department anymore because I live in an RV. And uh, now... I grow my own stuff. I grow my own. I have now got a 25 by 25 garden and a new and another section for other types of gardening. Uh, I have a, uh, we're building a, what they call a high tower for my tomatoes next year. And we're doing a greenhouse. What am I going to do in my RV? I actually have my own dump place area in my own property. So, um, uh, once we get kind of past all this family stuff, um, we're going to start doing a little small trips just to get, break the, still in good shape. It seems to be at a hundred percent, but Hey, you know, if it's been sitting for a while, that's not a good thing. So a little bit, see how things work and, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, whether I'm just going out. Uh, it's not hard to go to beautiful places around here in Central Oregon. And so that's definitely what we're going to do with our RV. However, I'm what I want things to be a little easier. So I might actually change the type of RV we have to be more of a weekend warrior, which I don't really have weekends anymore. Um, the, uh, the other thing I thought I'd bring up to you is Sherry and I have gotten a little more in touch with our faith. We're actually going to church on a regular basis. And this may not mean much to anybody, but uh, I was baptized as a kid, but we're actually getting baptized. I'm doing what they call reaffirming. And uh, Sherry is actually getting baptized for obviously her first time. Um, it's very exciting. And uh, no, we're not getting fanatical on anything, not even our religion. However, uh, if you want to know what's going on, and those of you who do know the Bible a little bit, all the things going on right now make a lot of sense. And uh, it's actually documented. And I'll just leave it at that. So I won't go that far down that rabbit hole. But uh, I have been watching, you know, RV uh, videos. And there's a one couple, I, I try to forget their name. <laughs> And they're in, they were at some RV park with an HOA getting into their business and all that stuff. And it's like, oh my Lord, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Why are you, why are you there? And then, uh, of course I still watch line screw cause you never kind of video he's coming up. He's still obsessed with attacking, um, 
Carolyn's RV thing. I don't really know that whole scenario, but it's funny. And uh, uh, the fanatical nomads are just uh, amazing. And then, oh yeah, in between all this time, a uh, nomadic fanatic actually bought a house. It's like, maybe he's starting to get it a little bit. It's kind of ha nice to have a base. Um, it'll be interesting. I mean, how long can you actually be living that nomad? I mean, what he needs is a girlfriend. <laughs> that would change his life totally. Anyway, um, but you know, if you're just single and on your own and just kind of, you, you have a lot of flexibility. Uh, obviously, you guys, most of you guys are families, got kids, married, or divorced, or kids still. Um, it changes the story. So you see these people like Bob Wells. His relationship is with his beard. Um, you don't believe me? He's petting it all the time. Anyway, <laughs> so the live the kind of life he's living a uh, nomadic out of a van pooping in a bucket um yeah that works i mean who's who's that gonna bother um i just lost my screen there for a minute um rv same thing um and there may be a reason why they're alone <laughs> they're not meant to have a partner <laughs> maybe there's a reason <laughs> And uh, maybe leaving society is even telling you more about what kind of uh, personalities they have. But anyway, <clears throat> normally most of the RVers I mean are folks that have partners of some sort or another. And uh, uh, that's where stability, a base, thinking about, can I do this forever? Do I really want to do this forever? Um, I don't know, but I really think I may have to have you listen to this. We know most of you are responsible dog owners and want to keep our parks and recreational areas pristine. Most of us have been stuck with cheap dog waste bags that are inconsistent and cumbersome. That's why we created Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Ranger Rob poopy bags are larger, deeper, stronger, and leak proof. Most of all, they have handles that make the bag easy to turn inside out and to seal with your dog's business. Ranger Rob poopy bags are lemon scented, eco friendly, and come in sheets and now in rolls. Stop getting stuck with cheap waste bags when you can have a Ranger Rob quality premium dog waste bags. Ranger Rob poopy bags are cost effective. They're in Amazon and you can get free shipping right now. Make picking up dog waste easier and comfortable. Ranger Rob poopy bags, making dog waste pickup a little easier. So there you go. Yes, we're still doing the Ranger Rob poopy bags. Why? Because I was an RVer. Why? Because nobody picks up after the dog. Why? Because the little parks that you go to have crappy bags. And so I was finding when we were um, traveling, um, we were ordering bags with handles, which are hard to get um, or hard to find back then. Um, so I, I created my own design and I wanted one a little bit wider and deeper. And I wanted affordable and I wanted them to smell good. And uh, <laughs> cause they never smell good after what you use them for. And um, I needed one that breaks down in landfills. And so range around poopy bags. There you go. Now the rolls, by the way, are not smaller. They are the exact same size as the sheets. And that's what makes range around poopy bags so nice. So if you want to get them in rolls, one that we could find to fit our bag rolls because ours are bigger. So uh, there you go. And of course we have the refills. So that's why we even created the Range Rob poopy bags. And they're actually designed to help our channel, help our family, help our radio station. Cause we also own good talk radio. Um, if you haven't noticed, we also changed the channel to Ranger Rob country living. And the reason we did that is because I own the trademark of Ranger Rob 
and see this beautiful hat. And by the way, if you want one of these hats, they're on Amazon. Um, and they're very nice hats. I love them. And I go through working in the property here so much. I go through a hat probably every month or and a half just because of getting them dirty and sweating and all that good fun stuff. So anyway, uh, that's the scoop behind Ranger Rob Poopy Eggs. So buying Ranger Rob Poopy Bags helps us. And I urge you to please write it down, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, and uh, go to Amazon and, and try a box. Just try a box for us. You're helping us. And two, you'll get some dog waste bags that you will really, really like. Um, obviously, I wouldn't make a poopy bag that I didn't like. And obviously, it had to be something a little different. And when you use ours, you go, dang, these are roomy. They're, you got room to work. And turning it inside out, you won't be. channel and our radio station good talk radio which in turn i will also remind you that um uh, rv talk radio plays on good talk radio uh twice uh saturdays and sundays i believe and i can't remember my own schedule and you can find us on spreaker and several other platforms and uh, <clears throat> uh once i launch this show um it will stimulate a whole bunch of other platforms and uh, yes, I have not done a show in a while because when I haven't been RVing much, but my life has been turned inside out, as you can see behind me for those who are watching the video version. Um, is life better? I think so. Um, do I miss RVing and the freedom? Occasionally, but I don't miss people being in my business. And uh, as long as you're an RVer, um, if you're going to RV parks and things like that, which most people my age do, you know, everything's with a mask. Half the things are shut down. Um, I just shake my head. I just think the world's inside out right now. Uh, I, I, I do believe that, I guess I had to bring a little religion into this, but I do believe God created some wonderful bodies that know how to handle this stuff and if you're a christian being afraid of death is not really a factor with us of course you know you want to enjoy this life as much as possible but um we're also not afraid of what happens afterwards <clears throat> and that bothers people um, for those who are atheists and out there and stuff they just live in emptiness and they think everything's about their life now and uh so that's not true with us and and this is stuff i've always believed and uh, um, now it's just more defined uh, and no I'm still a redneck <laughs> always be a redneck <laughs> and uh, let's put it this way I'm constantly asking for <laughs> forgiveness because <laughs> I s slip a lot but uh, uh, we have good intentions and we do try to be helpful and uh, we hopefully you are too. So uh, that's what's been going on. Um, some of the things, well, everything's so messed up right now. Because like if you're in uh, Canada, I guess there's like border crossing. You can only cross the line so many times. Uh, everywhere you go lately, they're in your face. Um, all the RV parks have got all this you know, the mask thing and all that stuff. And it's just um, much more comfortable out here in the country. I can put that way. When we go to stores and stuff, do we wear masks and stuff? Yes. Uh, of course, we have um, Sherry's mother who we care for. So we are extremely careful. Uh, but we don't go to town much. Uh, that's the cool part. Learning to be more self-sustaining and trying to use stores less and learning how to buy bulk and learning how to sh have things shipped to us. Because when we go, like for example, to buy, it's hard to get a freezer anywhere and it's not just here, but um, things that we've been trying to get, like a rototiller, I couldn't find one anywhere out here in the country, believe it or not. I had to order it and I also had to get a um, um, wood chipper <clears throat> and I couldn't find one locally. And had it shipped here and so i'm 
I have never used Amazon so much until recently because I can't get anything. Um, and not only that, um, seeds is a problem. So I'm actually been getting all the seeds I want for next year, next spring, uh, because I'm worried of whether I can get certain certain kinds of seeds. Um, I mean, generally, I think most seeds will be around, but like for tomatoes, I want what they call a jet star. And uh, boy, it was really hard to get those, but I got them. Um, certain kinds of cucumbers I wanted, and you can't just buy at any store. So uh, anyway, so we actually are um, dealing with these shortages, and Lord knows what it's like out in the RV world now where there's a lot more RVers out there, there's no doubt. And so obviously you're going to find getting repairs are a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> uh, getting service is a problem. Um, RV parks are fuller. I say that right? More full? Fuller <laughs> than usual. And a lot of people haven't been exactly happy with their memberships with things like Thousand Trails and stuff like that. <clears throat> And of course, every state's different depending whether it's a liberal state or more conservative. Um, some of the rules and regulations, like in California compared to North Dakota, totally different worlds. And uh, it's only getting worse. And then some of you guys are trying to deal with uh, homeschooling, um, along with a lot of parents who were not doing homeschooling but are now because they had to. And then that for sure and um, uh, boy my hats tip off to you guys that do homeschooling when is great you don't have to deal with um, common core you can actually teach history I mean real history <laughs> and it's really funny if you really if you guys are bored if you're bored uh, I would highly recommend you get on YouTube and do yourself a favor and start listening or uh, watching documentaries of the, uh, the 1929 depression days and not just what it was like to be in a depression, but what caused it and what was the chain reaction from it? Because because of our depression, we're the ones that actually stimulated depression over in Germany, which caused and the cause and effect there was um, uh, the rise of uh, Hitler. And along with a lot of other countries that went through a lot of major changes back in the day because believe it or not all the same things that are going on whether it's fascism or people uh, having race issues and stuff like that this is nothing new at all it's a replay and when you start listening to these documentaries you're going holy moly we are actually replaying history that's why they're trying to get rid of history because you might find out what the truth is, is we're going through it again. So we almost know how this is going to play out. And uh, the question is, where do you want to be when it plays out in certain levels of it? Uh, do you want to be out in an RV? Um, do you want to be in a home? Do you want to be in the city or outside of the city? Um, can you hunker down? Can you... Uh, do you have to depend on work and what if we have a grid problems you know some of you guys are working on web design and things like that I totally know that because I used to do it myself um, what are you gonna do if we don't have internet or we can't watch our shows like RV talk radio <laughs> and our favorite podcast <laughs> what are we gonna do or we can't make YouTube videos like I'm doing um, <clears throat> if you ever notice if you go to our channel we are doing daily videos, by the way, on country living. And believe me, they're not hard to make because there is always something going on here. And so if you really want to see what we're doing day to day here in the Central Oregon Homestead, um, it's there. And so, uh, in fact, a lot of folks are going to be a little surprised when they see an RV Talk Radio pop up in the middle of our channel. Um, but yeah, I, I'm glad someone kind of chewed me out saying, where's your RV Talk Radio shows? <laughs> And I admit, I mean, I enjoy them. Um, I kind of getting motivated again. And of course, I uh, need to kind of monitor what's going on with some of the channels. But some of them, 
I just shake my head. It's the same old crap. And they're always uh, upset about the same things. Uh, they don't like their neighbors or uh, something silly uh, breaks down or they're trying to put some weird device into their uh, RV that really doesn't belong in it. And, um, you know, the obsession with solar. And, it, and some of that falls over on homesteads, too. They're doing the same things to us. We're always talking about our chickens and self-sustaining. And um, But I do like what's going on in a lot of homesteading, by the way, because they're trying to find out, like, how do they be self-sufficient? How do they make their property and land work with animals? And animals work with the land. And so... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, it's really some really clever things are going on out there. And then what you're seeing is also a lot of families getting down the roots and learning old things that kids are forgot, um, families are forgetting to do. For example, let me just stimulate you and see, because I didn't know this either. So I get chickens, right? So I'm going, okay, what is going to happen when I start getting six to ten eggs a day what am i going to do with all those eggs i like eggs but it's just me and sherry and i can only give so many away to my neighbors did you know you can store eggs without cooking them without anything for a long period of time because of course in winter times chickens don't wait uh, lay as much <clears throat> and yes you can do it using a chemical called um hydrated lime and uh, you can actually store it without refrigeration eggs for a year uh, and they're just as good um, you can also take eggs and um, crack them uh, whip them up like you're going to make uh, scrambled eggs and let's say you have a family of uh, two like me and sherry we generally will scramble up four eggs so go ahead and scramble up four eggs pour them in a plastic bag seal that bag lay it flat so it doesn't take up so much room and put it in your freezer and for a long period of time you can have these pre mix you take them out set them in water they uh, because they're thin they um they uh, uh unfreeze <laughs> i can't think of the word sorry and in a matter of minutes and you just pour them out and cook them and you get scrambled eggs and you can so if we get really backed up on eggs we're going to start cracking eggs and uh, and putting them in baggies and freezing them so we got fr friends over you just pull a few of those babies out and hey guess we're all having scrambled eggs um but uh i, I didn't know that and i actually was a I, I actually had a farm mini farm before i never knew that and i had a game bird farm didn't know i could keep eggs that long i know i know other tricks about hatching eggs but i to preserve eating eggs it was amazing so uh yeah there's a lot of old history that you know maybe getting a base and maybe being a little bit more self-sufficient and maybe travel when you want to is a little bit better balance knowing you have a place to go and you can uh, feed yourself and uh yeah it's just I'm starting to feel like that's important. And yes, I was RVing for the pleasure of seeing all the new places, but COVID has really spoiled it. Two, other people have spoiled it. Two, of course, when there's more people, there's more rules. So all these new rules have spoiled it. A lot of free places to stay are gone. And in the abuse of people uh, to our um, BLM lands, Forest Service lands, uh, state parks, um, national parks, uh, they're not being taken care of. And of course, when that happens, more rules. And, you know, what was a 30-day stay is a 14-day stay. And what was a 14-day stay is a five-day stay. And uh, it's all being destroyed by a handful of bad people. And unfortunately, they're coming out in the RV world. And uh, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it bothers me. And uh, I don't know why it's this certain. And then there's just irritating people out there sometimes. 
<laughs> there's irritating people everywhere. I mean, it's not just the RV world, but uh, uh, I don't. I just right now have no desire to go like to another state because one is I don't know the rules. Two, the people's cultures are a little different in every region you go to, pertaining to you know how strict they are with masks and how available things are. And uh, I get concerned about that. Um, and yes, I will point out that I don't have the best lighting today. <laughs> I don't have an off. I, I don't have a studio right now. I need to put one together. Once again, I told you that it, where I'm at, we're kind of holding on to a lot of things in the main room that I'm going to turn into my studio again, which of them in turn will be a lot more RV talk radio shows um, will be built, um, but not for another I probably can't even think about doing that for another month. But after that, and uh, of course now I got to deal with weather. Uh, I may actually see that four letter word. You know what that word is, don't you? <laughs> Snow, ooh, that white stuff. And by the way, if you're wondering how the dogs are doing, Cinder, while well, some of you may not be uh, know that we have a German Shepherd now. So if you watch the channel, you probably know for sure we have a German Shepherd. Um, first of all, the German Shepherd didn't like our pool, couldn't get her to go in the pool, still can't get her to go in even a mini pool. Um, of course, Cinder loves any kind of water you give her. So I bought her a pretty decent pool. Um, so I, uh, switch out the water about once a week and she's got something to cool down on because it has been pretty warm up here. But, uh, it's going to be interesting because the German Shepherd has never seen snow and she wouldn't have ever seen it down in Phoenix. And uh, the other thing is I've noticed, um, if you haven't noticed, for if you look at the videos closer, Cinder has lost a lot of weight. She was getting kind of chunky. And uh, this pup, who's now the same size as her, um, they are just the buds in half. And so uh, the, I couldn't have done that in an RV life for her. Although Cinder got to go to lots of cool places and stuff, she's now got five acres of puppy craziness here. Chasing lizards, uh, getting in our gardens, um, wrestling with the other pup, um, barking at deer. It's, it's, her life is totally different, and she's, uh, I think, healthier now and might live a little bit longer. She's almost eight years old now. Uh, the pup is only going on eight months old and uh, she's getting kind of close to getting um, um, fixed here pretty soon. So I got to get her set up for uh, for that operation before she goes in the heat. <laughs> and I still got a little time. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, having pets, that's another thing that's been a wonderful thing is, is having a little room for them to play and, and run around and uh, of course, having five acres is a lot of room for them and uh, lots of mischief they can get after and, and chickens to bark at. And, um, yeah, it's just never ending um, adventure here. <clears throat> and that's been a good thing. So am I happy with the new kind of lifestyle we got going? Yes. Do I miss RVing? Of course. Um, Will I be RVing some more? Yes. Um, I may end up having to continue using our very large fifth wheel um, because, you know, we bought it new and we're still kind of underwater on it. I couldn't sell it for what I owe on it. And however, we gotten heavily out of debt. And so the only debt we have is the RV. So we're actually overpaying on it now, which that'll balance it out soon. And when that happens, uh, I'd like to move it down to something like a 26 foot C class. Um, we're at something a little, or just go to a, like a smaller travel trailer. Uh, something easy because everything is a little harder at almost 60. <laughs> Not quite 60 yet. Um, but yeah, um, I think a trailer would be, I'd still be around the 26, 28 foot. Uh, I still want the slides and stuff, but I just want something simpler. Um, and I don't have to take my canopy off to put on my uh, fifth wheel. Um, we'll see. Um, and the problem is it's so big. Um, we have a, 
a Montana 3625, and it's a beast. And really, it measures out the closer to 40 in certain circumstances where you measure. And uh, this is not, there's limitations. Um, like we have what's called the Crooked River up here in Prineville. And I love to go up, we used to go up there with a trailer before in the old days. Um, but mine's too much of a monster to take up there. Um, it would have been nice to be smaller um, because we have a base and we actually don't have to go far to be out in the outdoors here. Uh, the other thing that I will be in, um, going back to, you probably, guys probably didn't know this, but I was a fly fisherman. And uh, I haven't fly fished forever. And this is actually where I learned. And uh, so we, uh, uh, there's a few things I want to do again, but simpler. Uh, RVing again, I need to simplify it. And as you get older, you would understand that. Um, um, younger folks, they can do that extra setup and that little, I mean, all that extra effort. But gosh, I know working in this property, <laughs> and the worst part, you guys are going to laugh, is stooping. And of course, that's all I do every day is stooping down to work in gardens, stooping down to pick up wood stooping down to build things and I'm, I'm actually improving so I'm actually I've actually Sherry and I both have been losing weight and that's been a good thing and uh, uh, when we we're RVing forget it we were not doing well when it was coming to physical exercise um, and eating um, we very rarely eat out anymore um, some of the things that we try to utilize is like I'm not going to raise cows and I'm, besides where I'm at, they don't want you to have cows or pigs and I don't want them. They're too much damn work. However, I'm surrounded by, by farms everywhere. So I went into uh, a co-op with uh, uh, some people that had cows and just bought a quarter beef. And now I put the word out, I want to do a half a pig and let them raise them. I don't mind paying for my por portion. And, uh, so uh, I guess that's where community comes in. And uh, that would have been hard to do with an RV lifestyle. So uh, I'm not writing off RVing at all. In fact, uh, uh, the big part here is I'm going to make sure and do more shows uh, talking about more of the weekend warriors or some of the other practicalities. And of course, some of the reports that are coming out are just amazing. Um, how this economy has uh, made it more practical for people to look at RVs to live in than trying to hold up a mortgage. Um, and of course, if you had a mortgage, an RV, and maybe a really nice car and a truck, and you just lost all your jobs, what would you let go? And just walk away from probably the house in a nice car keep the truck keep the RV and live out of that because the overhead would your re overhead would go way down yes your credit score would be wiped out um, you may have to do a bankruptcy we understand that um, so there may be a lot more people out there not just necessarily RVing for fun but RVing for necessity and I think a lot of that's going on. And so, uh, I don't know, I just, I think it's something we ought to consider. Um, uh, I gotta kinda look at my time here, but <laughs> uh, I do wanna take the time for those who have been a long time listeners to RV Talk Radio. First of all, thank you very much. Um, I, I, it gets, I get tickled pink, I feel like, I, and then I feel bad when since says, when are you gonna do another show? We kinda like your shows. And it's like, uh, and then I feel bad. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'll start doing shows again. And uh, uh, for those of you who listen and, and sort of shoot me notes once in a while and keep me uh, going on this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things I can do. I mean, obviously, I'm not as prepped as I'm normally prepped up because usually I'll watch a particular RV show. I'll be so ticked off after I watch it that I was like, I get on the microphone right away and start doing a show. Well, I've been kind of avoiding that a little bit because I've been kind of in this new world. Um, but uh, winter's coming, time's going to be quieter. 
won't be working out in the yard so much. We'll be going into a, a winter mode and uh, I'll probably very much want to do a lot more shows. And uh, they're good for the RV. Um, people love RV Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio. And I do have other uh, stations that syndicate this show. And so I'm sure that they're going to be a little happy, pretty happy to see that there's new episodes coming out. So I need to get on the stick. You're, you're helping me. And uh, so uh, I, I, <laughs> I want to thank you. So uh, with that note, guys, I, I got to start wrapping this up. But one of them is please be safe out there. Think about some of the things we just talked about and how they relate to what you want to do with RVing. Does it still include an RV? Um, will you RV a little differently? Maybe prep up a little more. Um, you know, it's a lot. You can do a lot with uh, uh, these new freeze-dried things. Uh, you could probably stock up pretty good. Of course, the magical ingredients is water. Um, but how how long could you hold out? And then, uh, and once you run out of propane or fuel or water, what are you going to do? What's your backups? And so those are the questions I, I want our viewers to think about. I know I'm talking a little bit of this doom and gloom a little bit, but I'm worried. Uh, what I'm talking about is a normal cycle in economies. And uh, however, with this one being COVID oriented and so much government money going out, the problem is it creates massive in inflation. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people losing their jobs and stuff are you know, in the big cities paying big mortgages and driving nice cars because they kind of had to. And uh, they're going to they're gonna have to walk away from it. And the results are homelessness, more apartments, more RVs, things like that. Um, so once again, are you out there in the RV enjoying life vacationing? Or are you surrounded by people that are living in an RVs out of necessity? Um, that's my big question to you. And uh, my guess is that's what the new cards that are going to be dealt out to the RV industry is the fact that um, there's a lot more people out there living in an RVs because of necessity. And, uh, and I understand it and it makes sense in a lot of cases. Um, but that brings out the good, bad and the ugly. So it'll be interesting to see where the RV industry goes, what the RV community and social life will be like, and how all these RV parks, when they get, of course, when they know that they can charge more, they will. Wouldn't you if you own an RV park and can get away with it? And, and don't tell me no. If you can make more bucks by charging what was 600 a month to 900 a month, you'd do it. It'd be you'd be silly not to that's how business works so uh, i'm sh i'm hearing a lot of that going on and so uh just be aware of it and keep that when you bring down your pros and cons of what you're going to do with your rv talk about these things like what's the future going to look like think ahead what's next year going to look like it could be pretty ugly it could be fine if it's fine that's great and since we've talked about what to do to prepare if it's not fine, hopefully this show helped you. And uh, that's what it's all about is this, oh, I never thought about that. Well, what are you going to do about it? The rest is up to you. We can't tell you what to do. I mean, we can give you ideas. I can tell you what other people are doing. But um, uh, it's some pretty serious stuff. So, um. Once again, thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please like, subscribe, share this video, share this podcast. To, there is an audio version of this. Um, share it to the world. Bring everybody on board. I'll get off the... <laughs> I'll get going and start getting more episodes out. So thank you very much. You guys be safe and we'll talk to you later. Please feel free to leave comments and please be um, polite, not rude. I know and uh say hello and uh let's get rolling on all this again so take care now and buy yourself an rv thank you very much for watching our video please take the time to like subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world thanks